Hello and welcome to Flippin' Through the Internet's number one Mad Magazine news, review, and interview channel. And today, we're flipping through Mad Magazine number 121, released September 1968. Our price, 35 cents, which is indeed cheap. But before we do that, please let me remind you, hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. That's the number one way that you can support this channel. Help it grow, help it succeed. And because uh, I can't do it on my own. I'm just talking all by my lonesome. Nobody's around. But you make it grow. Anyway, what the fuck am I talking about? You make, you make it grow. Help me fucking just hit subscribe and all that if you like the channel. You want to support me in another way, patreon.com slash flipping through. What do you get if you support me on Patreon? Well, any amount gets you a sick set of stickers. Give me a little bit more and you get a pretty awesome set of buttons as well. Um, anyway, with that, I can thank the people who are supporting me right now. Jacqueline Gosling, Reflection of Perfection, Frank Snyder, Misamo, David Strickler, Megan McInerney, Shane Buckley, Bobby Weigel, Cam Hayden, Rob Wilson, Rod Meadsbury, Andrew Goldfarb, and oh, C Casey Ori and Little Cozy Nostril. Thank you guys so much for the support. I hope I can keep on earning it. With that, um, this is the reason we're here. I apologize. Suddenly I've become incredibly tired and I don't know why. What do we have here? We have Mad Magazine number 121. It's a cool cover. Um, I don't know what language this is. This is like Hindu or something. I don't know what their language is called. I know like there's like the Hindu people, but is that what their language is called? I know Japanese people speak Japanese. What do people in India speak? Do they speak Indian? Is that what their written language is called? I don't know. Anyway, who's on the cover? Oh, look it. It's the Beatles. And I don't know who this is. Twiggy? That's my guess. Whenever I see somebody in like the 60s, a woman in the 60s with eye makeup, I'm like, Twiggy. That's usually a pretty good guess. This is um, Alfred E. Newman. And below, we have the four Beatles and then Twiggy. And right here, their buddy. Uh, I had to look this up, this name. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. That was the dude that um, they met and they were like, whoa, I'm going to be a vegetarian and I'm going to start giving a shit, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what their reaction was to them uh, because I wasn't that much into the Beatles. This is, though, a pretty cool cover and I love the letter design um, because it is, um, it's in English. It says, Swami. How I love you, how I love you, my dear Swami. Swami, how I love you, how I love you, my dear Swami. How I love you, how. And then it just sort of, it doesn't repeat. It's like, um, then it down here. Swami, how I love you, how I love you, my dear Swami. Um, that's pretty cute. Um, oh, I don't know that I've seen this. I don't know that I've seen this Al Jaffe um, cartoon before, but as a guy who loves fireworks, and loved them as a child. In fact, I have sustained multiple fireworks injuries playing with fireworks as a young man. This speaks to me. Um, and yes, yeah, the kid just goes in, gives him five cents, comes out with some little lady finger, some baloney like that. And uh, then he has a bright idea and tosses it into the fireworks store. Um, we, I live in a very restrictive environment. I have to actually travel to another state in order to buy fireworks, if you can believe that. On a day where we celebrate America's freedom, I actually have to leave my state to buy fireworks. It makes me sick, and I hope it does you. Um, pretty sick, pretty sick letters department, let me tell you. Um, First off, a baggy little origami thing. Um, looking for the latest mad silly goose for just a little folding money. You don't have to gander 
at the newsstands. Subscribe to MAD. Have the next 19 issues mailed directly to your own flock house. I just thought that's cool. I love Baggy. I love it when he, his stuff shows up. Um, here we have the Viva Mad house ad. But the thing that I wanted to point out, the thing that I actually am enjoying about this is the price rise. So this was uh, 35 cents is a cover price on this one, which is indeed cheap. Now for Mad Magazine issue 119, that's the one I had done a a video recently about it uh, it has the Bonnie and Clyde Palmy and Claude issue um, that was the issue where they raised the cover price from 30 cents up to 35 um, and as you might have guessed people did not like that um, so here's some here's some feedback some constructive criticism about the price right uh, price hike uh, why don't you do a satire on one of today's most serious runaway inflationary trends, mainly the price of MAD. Marvin Adler, Massapequa Park, New York. Um, I see MAD is now 35 cents. I realized that the New York sanitation men receive, recently received a wage increase, but I never expected the price of garbage to go up accordingly. I did really, I thought that was very funny. That's Lawrence Halpern from Flushing. New York. I hope this rise in price doesn't mean a corresponding rise in quality. Um, it's not highway robbery, it's grand theft. Now that highway robbery, that's a reference to Balmy and Claude because instead of saying cheap under the price, it says highway robbery. Um, why don't you guys just bow to the powers that be, succumb to the establishment and accept advertising? Then you wouldn't have to raise your price to cover rising to cover rising publishing costs. Donald Hicks, Chicago, Illinois. To which Ed replies, we'd rather die. Anyway, I thought that that was um, a fitting response uh, and I liked it. Now, I, if you're curious about the cover price of Mad Magazine, you can see, I made a chart actually on Google Drive. Uh, and so you can see the price increase. We have actually had the most stable price since 2009 the prices remained at five dollars and 99 cents the next longest span was in the 19 was it like from 55 to 65 um, and that was a cost of 25 cents which is indeed cheap they all are right i wonder if i compare it to inflation of the dollar what it would look like it's got to look pretty good right now uh, magazines cost like $15. I wanted to buy a Time Magazine Godzilla edition. Jeez Louise, who can afford a magazine these days? Valley of the Dolls. This is a movie I've never seen starring actors I'm not, I, I can't recognize, um, by an artist that I admire. But as such, we're going to just keep on rolling through. There's some pretty cool stuff in this issue. Starting right here, well, not starting right here, it started earlier, all right, it started with Al Jaffe, but here's some of the cool stuff. Uh, the dawn of the dope age is upon us. Everyone is turning on. Yes, we said everyone. While hardcore hippies are turning on using wild new psychedelic drugs with strange names made up of initials like DMT, LSD, STP, and SJ, us plain ordinary squares are turning on with everyday varieties of psychedelic fun. Artist is George Woodbridge, George Woodbridge, which is, I don't know what he, like, did he do these weird collages um, or just like the artwork and somebody else did the collage? I don't know. And writer Mark Bricklin, a name I will tell you, I am not familiar with, okay? Um, I don't know. That's all I can say is that I'm not familiar with him, but he has, um, oh, geez, what the hell am I doing? I just clicked the wrong button. Um, I don't think he has a lot of contributions. I'll put it that way. Um, here we go. We'll start with the KKK. <laughs> this extremely difficult to swallow cross-shaped pill seems to arrest mental development and induce pyromania, transvestism, and a redneck. 
Users are particularly sensitive to color and have strong aversions to all foreign objects. Devotees like to congregate in southern swamps before taking their mind-blowing trips. Um, I, thought, I thought that one was pretty hilarious. Uh, very fun wordplay on it, I gotta say. Um, the inducing pyromania and dislike of foreign objects was very good. The only thing that would make it better is if there was a joke about Catholics, because the KKK hate Catholics for some reason. Oh, I'm sorry. Look at there it is. There, there, there's the uh, the reference to Catholics. Very good. All right. Well, good job on the artist for picking up the slack there. Um, what? Oh, I want to do the CIA one. This is in '68, guys. The appearance and effects of this drug are classified information, and its true structure cannot be broken down under analysis. It seems to be most effective when working in devious ways throughout the system, but its actions are known to be uncontrollable. Its users, whose identities are kept top secret, appear to feel that they are not answerable to anyone and can behave in any way they see fit with perfect immunity. One group using this drug suffered fatal results while tripping in the Bay of Pigs area. This is fun. I don't know. Mark Bricklin was assassinated a few days later. Um, this is a really cool one. I don't know. Mark Bricklin. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on this again. I'm kind of curious about this Mark Bricklin guy. And it brings me to Brick. Is that how you spell his name? Oh, Brick like a brick. Bam Brick. Mark Bricklin. This is his only thing. This is the only thing he produced for Mad Magazine. And it's awesome. I'm surprised at that. I'm curious why. And here we have, this is great. Um, you got to go through it on your own time. Don Martin looks... <laughs> I feel like I can't even say this title. Don Martin looks at all them Indians. <laughs> like, what the hell? Uh, and it's funny. There's like very, there's funny things that are like this guy, the, the gringo, they don't say gringo, the white man running through and it goes snap, crunch, crunch, crack, crash, smash, flush, swamp. And then the, uh, the Native American is running through and s s all of the sound effects are silence, silence, quiet, quiet, silence, stealth, stealth, hustle, hustle, shh, quiet, muffle, muffle, not a sound, quiet, quiet, hush. That was it's good. It's really good um, and pretty darn funny. Oh my goodness. Another mad primer. Who would have guessed it? Um, this one is illustrated by Jack Rickard and written by Dick DiBartolo. These are, these are usually good, okay? But I find that I just get a little bored because I, I get several. Like, I, I see them... This week, I might even see one next week. Um, I get a lot of mad primer exposure. So I think when it's like not stretched out, when there's not like months between it or month, many months between it, I think it's, uh, it's a little harder to bear. But if this is something that just showed up every other month or every four months, was it semi-monthly at this point? I forget if it was six times a year or 12. Um, but anyway, it would probably be more bearable. But it's almost like sometimes when you read, okay, so I picked up um, John Carter of Mars, like all the floppies of that and from Marvel, the Marvel adaptation of it. And I was reading through it and it, it doesn't read very well. Because they aren't, it's not like modern comics where they write, where they currently write for the trade paperback. Um, and then it's split up. They were writing it because it was a comic that was serialized. So it just sort of reads better when you read them like one a month. Uh, when you read it all at once, it's just like there's a lot of redundancy and um, it's not as enjoyable, I imagine. Um, and I feel like that's sort of the thing with Mad Primer. Here we have the lighter side of swimming pools. Um, I do have to say, I 
love this lettering. That looks so cool with all the little bubbles. Turned out really nice. Um, hi, Mrs. DeSalvo. Is Bobby home? He's out and back. Hey, Bobby, what you want to do? But they, he do, they don't, they're not, that's not a real question. That's not a sincere question. They want to use his pool. Anyway, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this to us. Um, whoa, what the heck? Oh, I accidentally skipped this before. Um, when I was going through this, before I did the, the thing. Artist Joe Orlando, writer Dick DiBartolo, more specialized self-defense books. How did this become like the Chinese lettering? It's not like it looks like brush strokes or something. But the thing is, like, Chinese and Japanese restaurants use it too. Like, how was this the font that they all, everybody decided on? Like, whoa, that looks Asian. I'm going to put that on my Chinese food store. Self-defense for tiny tots. It's your ice cream. Defend it. A collection of punches and blocks that, oh, that only use your free hand. Convert your cat pistol into the real thing. Here we have Mad's cliche conversation killers. Um, now, am I crazy or are there some um, inserts, uh, some artist inserts in this article? I don't recognize all of them, but there are a few that look a little familiar to me. Um, for example, oh, here it is. This first one, not like the little handlebar mustache. Is that Sergio Aragones? Or, like, over here, is this supposed to be Prochios or something? I can't help. There's LBJ. I know that. Right? Or is that Nixon? He didn't work for Matt ever. Um, but, the, okay, let's talk about the writing first. Um, it's okay. It's almost like Matt's snappy answers to stupid questions. Um, so, were you surprised? No, I was just practicing to look like I was having a heart attack. This is at a surprise party. Boy, were you shocked. Boy, were you shocked when you came in. Who wouldn't be seeing you in this house? I bet you knew about it all the time. Yeah, but I decided to come anyway. Isn't it grand? All your friends are here. And not only them, but you too. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but it is sort of like snappy answers. But, um... Almost less sarcastic, more biting, though. Um, but yeah, this is like, it's a fun one to read, I thought. Um, but I got a little bit lost in the illustration. This is what I'm, I'm going to go on record. I would love to have a surprise birthday party. Okay, so if anybody out there is listening, if I just knew people cared, that'd mean a lot to me. Anyway, um, here are a few others. Um, where are the others that I saw? Is this Harry North? <laughs> no, it just looks like a Harry North Esquire illustration. But look at this is Woodbridge. And then I thought, is this um, Wally Wood from like an odd angle? But then I noticed the pipe in the glasses. But it can't be Dave Berg. Um, I don't know. Here's Fat Hitler. I know that, obviously. Um, I don't know. I might be grasping at straws. Um, but yeah, here we have a nostalgic look at Sandlot Baseball. Um, you, you know, I love Paul Coker. I think he's a great artist. Um, I think Dean Norman is, a, is an awesome writer. Ask me something that Dean, tell me to name five things that Dean Norman has written. I can't. I assume he's a good writer. This one, I didn't really enjoy. It was just sort of sappy. It just felt like, yeah, just too sort of like corny, sappy, like sentimental, um, which is weird for Mad. It just doesn't feel like it actually fits in Mad. Here we have, oh, damn, this is another one that I missed when I was going through this. Alley Oops by Sergio Aragones. Oop, oop. Oh, I can't do the old lady. I can't do the blind guy. I can't do this street bum. Throws away his pistol and his... You'd think that the pistol would be worth some amount of money. 
And then they all have a fat stack of cash. Oh, that's kind of cute. Um, these I love. The new protests to the same old tunes. Um, artist Bob Clark. Oh, and it's so great. Look at that. Oh, dude, that housewife is a babe. And then you have um, this bird wearing the ski mask and like this little goofball family and these dirty hippies. Fun chicken fat. Instead of Arthur the avocado, it's Melvin um, the marijuana plant. <laughs> Uh, and these, I just love these expressions on these guys choking out from the smog. Um, here's the problem. Uh, writer Tom Koch. That's not the problem. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Um, the problem is that uh, Tom Koch picked all these songs that I don't know. There's only one of these that I can sing. So I just had to like... Um, admire the artwork and i guess like i had to read them but i'm not going to sing you a song the tune of which i do not know the only one i have is home on the range and this is a rousing sneer for the undedicated physician groan groan with your pain your doctor has vanished again of course it's his right to go out Friday night, so just lie there, shut up, don't complain. Writhe, twitch, and feel strange. You've left word with Doc's phone exchange. Someday he'll check in and prescribe aspirin. That's the best you can hope to arrange. Wretch, whimper, and bawl. As down to Doc's office you crawl. It's painfully slow, but that's where you must go, cause you know he won't make a house call. Pain, pain you can't bear. So die, but don't die in despair. As downward you slide, see the cheerier side, you won't live to endure Medicare. Black. <laughs> anyway, that's all I'm going to make you suffer through. Here we go. The Flying Nun. With, um, this is like, they do this every once in a while on Mad Bird. It'll be like, there'll be a host going through the, uh, the satired TV or movie show, movie or TV show with you. And this one is Bishop Fulton J. Not Sheen, but showbiz. Now, um, Bishop Fulton J. Sheen was a, um, a TV and radio priest. And, uh, you know, he's a famous Catholic. Maybe one of our most famous. I guess JFK? Or the Pope, maybe. <laughs> I guess the Pope is the most famous one. Um, but there's a serious lack of Catholics on TV. We used to have... Fulton Sheen, The Flying Nun. We had Father Dowling. We had EWTN. What is it now? There's nobody. Name the, your top 10. Comment down below. Top 10 Catholics on television. I'll wait. Anyway, this is, I forget this woman's name. Um, but she was the one who was like, you love me. You really love me. At the Academy Awards or something. Um, but these drawings, this caricature of Fulton Sheen, it's like, it's really good. If you look at him, this is like, um, exquisite. It's Mort Drucker. What do you expect? They should have given the Catholic thing, uh, front and center, just to really stick it to the, um, to the anti-Catholics, I don't know, the KKK. Um, uh, welcome to Covent, Covent, Co welcome to Convent Hilton. Um, and here's like a nice little Whimmel Builder, a Whimmel Builder of this world. And um, anyway, and then we have the very rare single um, Spy versus Spy. So look, he stole some plans. Oh, it's going to, there, it's going to get him with a, whatchamacallit, a snake. That's the, that's the best one. All right, stop. Boom, he tries to shoot him, breaks that. Boom. 
What a chump. Anyway, we got a, oh, I forgot about this whole part. There's this, the fake sick teen, rather than 16, the fantabulous chimps. 1,027 far out photos. No, this is really our back cover. We're using it to introduce another Mad Magazine satire. I always love it when they do that. The fake note pinned to it. Um, here is Ringo Gringo's Eye, number 16 in a series of 25. Collect the entire series and you've got an exclusive 16 giant color pinup. Next issue, number 17, Ringo's Other Eye. This would actually be really cool to have, like a, to do in a magazine, like every issue you have this and you cut it out and you have a giant poster. Did they do that for those teen things? Um, Jack Rickard may have painted this. I don't know, it doesn't. It gives, written by Larry Siegel, Jack Rickard, and, oh, Jack Rickard and Jack Davis doing the artwork. And obviously you can tell what, Jack Davis had done. So there's Johnny Flush and the Commodes, Hank and the Hernias, um, Nero and the Arsonists watching Rome burn, um, KKK and the Klansmen. Dude, they are really, KKK is getting top billing in this magazine. Our fab singing career in picks. That's Gino and the Gassers. This is, um, this is a fun one. I don't know. It's like sometimes I don't enjoy the fake magazines all of that much, but I think having Jack Davis do all of this and um, having really good writing, especially for things like this, all these fake bands, Itchy and the Lepers, Sam and the Psychos. Um, I don't know. It works pretty well. Anyway, you guys. This has been flipping through. Remember, hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. That's the best way that you can support this channel. And I can't grow without your support. There, I say it perfectly fine at the end. With that, thank you so much for watching. Toodaloo.